In this video, we will cover the manufacturing and installation of the intake and exhaust manifolds, the structural cross braces, the final installation of the solar air tubes, painting, the installation of the bimetal snap switch, and finally the closing up of the unit by installing the plexiglass. The intake and exhaust manifolds need to ensure that all air travels through the interior of the cans. Therefore, it is important to have a good seal to each can. This also means the manifold itself needs to seal well against the interior of the heat box as well as the plexiglass when installed later. I use the drill press to cut the holes through the manifold, layering four sheets of half inch plywood on top of each other to cut as many holes as possible at once for the four manifolds needed, two per solar air heater. I used a brad nailer to assist in keeping the sheets together and aligned during the drilling process. Here I am removing one sheet of wood to enable the drill to go deeper and cut a second sheet or a second manifold. Video speed has been increased here 10 times. Two manifolds finished, and a good start on a second set. After I installed the first manifold, it was necessary to temporarily install the solar air tube so I could determine the exact location of where to install the two 1 16th inch half inch angle 6063 aluminum extrude. My intentions were to align these 24 inch long extruded pieces between the joins of the cans, lightly applying pressure on the cans holding them firmly against the back of the heat chamber. Of course those cross braces don't just drop in. I had to manufacture two aluminum doors that would allow for the installation of the cross braces after the solar air tubes were installed. Like any other face that will come in contact with the plexiglass, I used flush rivets to complete the work. Here I'm doing a test fit, including the new cross braces, before the permanent installation of the tubes with a PL construction adhesive.
I use masking tape to hold tubes tightly against the exhaust manifold during installation. The installation of the intake manifold took even more fiddling. Even though previously I had talked about the importance of ensuring each solar air tube was the same length, I still noticed slight variations in length on a stack of 17 cans. I addressed this by manufacturing two plywood shims. One is 1 8th of an inch and one is 1 16th of an inch. This ensured all nine tubes would be snug against the intake manifold. Very liberal with the PL construction adhesive here. After all, I won't be able to reach around the backside later to add additional material. Double checking, looking for a good seal and to ensure that all four air holes are unobstructed in each tube. Prior to painting the interior of the chamber, I wanted to test the paint on the foam insulation to ensure no damage was done to the foam. The paint I chose was high heat Rust-Oleum product designed for painting barbecues. This one worked out well, having no negative impact on the foam. Prior to purchasing this product, I tested a similar heat paint from Trimclad, but unfortunately it ate through the foam. Three separate light coats of paint were provided, all within 60 minutes of each other. Plan on two cans of paint for a solar air heater of this size. I mounted the bi-metal snap switch on a scrap piece of 32 thou aluminum. Here's a view of the backside. I installed enough wire to cut to length at a later date. PL construction adhesive, some weight, and it is permanently installed. Clear silicon adhesive will be the primary method of adhering the plexiglass to the solar air heater. However, following guidance provided by Canis Plastics, where I purchased the material, they suggested four additional retainers down each side of the glass, just as an insurance policy. Here you can see the plexiglass laying flat on top of the solar air heater. The glass still has its protective blue covering. I will leave the external protection in place until the unit is installed on the hanger. That will be the last thing I remove. I used a scrap piece of plexiglass to practice drilling. Again, advice provided by Canis Plastics, they suggested the holes to be a half inch from the edge and no more pressure than the weight of the drill when making the holes. After precisely positioning the glass on top of the heat chamber, I used a 1 8 inch pilot drill to go through the plexiglass. I then used these holes as guides to drill a 1 8 inch hole in the face of the aluminum heat chamber. Here you can see the glass clecoed to the heat chamber. Then, again using the 1 8 inch holes as guides, I drilled them out to 1 quarter inch to leave a little bit of movement for expansion without any pressure being placed on the plexiglass. I actually used a 1764th bit. 
instead of a one quarter inch bit, only because it has been used less and is therefore sharper. One full tube of silicone is used around the perimeter prior to laying the glass down. Also note the bead of silicon across the top of the exhaust manifold to ensure a seal with the glass. The positioning of the plexiglass once the silicon sealer is down is definitely a two-person job. We actually practice the lift and move several times before doing it for real. Here you can see the little extra pressure from the screw head squeezing out silicon. Like before, lots of clamps and weights to ensure a tight seal. Here is one finished solar air heater, ready to be installed. Stay tuned, more to come.